everyone. Happy Wax on Wednesdays. Today I have some of my paper mache bowl vessel forms that I'm going to prep and get ready to paint with encaustic. So I thought I'd show you how I do that. And paper mache lends itself really well to encaustic because it's so porous. It's a perfect substrate for encaustic. And here I'm just sanding them a little bit to open up the pores of the paper mache after I form them and, uh, and get it ready for all that wax to absorb into the vessel. And I can use a variety of paints once I have uh, the encaustic base down. I can add uh, oil sticks, I can add pan pastels, I can paint the bowl first if I want to, if I wanted to paint the bowl with oils and, uh, and then add encaustic afterwards, of course I can. But I'm going to prep these with some encaustic medium, and as I showed you, is a bag of RNF encaustic medium there, and I've just melted some on my hot plate. I'm using just a really cheap chip brush to apply the encaustic medium. Um, you need a natural bristle when using encaustic so the bristles don't burn because they are heated, but they don't have to be expensive. And this is just a really cheap chip brush from the cat craft store that I get in bulk packages. And the encaustic medium that I showed you, the bag of pellets, is a ready-made medium, which is beeswax mixed with Damar resin. The Damar resin that is in this medium is what's going to harden this wax over time. So if I were to paint this bowl just with plain beeswax, the bowl would remain tacky over time, and it would never quite harden. So the Damar resin... Uh, enables the wax to harden over time. So for this reason, encaustic is its own finish. And in a couple days time after I paint this, I can go ahead and go back in and polish this up to a really high lacquer-like shine. So the Damar resin allows for this beautiful finish to be applied, whether it's on a painting or a three-dimensional vessel like this. So I'm just painting the inside and the outside of the bowl, and I'm going to go ahead and fuse in between every single layer that I add. I'm not going to add too many layers to this bowl because I really like the thin thinness of this paper mache. It's really delicate, and I don't want to um, add a lot of bulky layers of wax. I'm also leaving the bottom of this bowl with no encaustic added whatsoever and that way when it's set upon a surface it doesn't it's not going to stick to anything on the bottom because it's just paper mache. So I'm going to keep I always keep the bottom of my vessels clear. It also allows a place for me to sign my work. And as I said before, I'm fusing every single layer of encaustic into the bowl with a heat gun. I'm just using a heat gun from the hardware store. It smooths out. You can see it's smoothing out that finish, that smoothing out any brush strokes there. It's also getting any air bubbles as I fuse. It's also allowing it to bond to that paper mache and any additional layers of wax will be bonded to the previous one every time I fuse it. And this is a really important step in encaustic so that everything bonds really well to your substrate and any additional layers of wax that you add. So it's a permanent and archival bond for either your painting or your three-dimensional piece. Painting on a three-dimensional vessel with encaustic is just very similar to painting on your panel. You can, of course, build up texture. You can leave the drips. You can build up a dry brush texture. You can smooth it out with a heat gun or a torch. You can use all of the different pigments that you normally would with encaustic painting. The only thing that you cannot use, of course, is acrylic paint because it does not form a bond with the encaustic. But anything that you would normally do on your encaustic panel, you can do in this three-dimensional form. So it's really exciting. I love working three-dimensionally with encaustic and especially on these vessel forms. And if you get as excited as I do about working with encaustic three-dimensionally, then I invite you to come on over and join me in Encausticology Wax and Symbolism online workshop. And this is hours and hours of how to step-by-step -step how I create my encaustic vessels and forms in a huge variety of substrates. So there's just a ton of different projects and techniques in this workshop and of course you have forever access after purchase just like all of the encausticology workshops. And I will leave the link down below this video for the details of that workshop or of course you can see all the encausticology workshops on sherryrooflogal.com. 
So I'm adding three layers, three thin layers of encaustic medium to both the insides and outsides of each of these bowls, fusing in between and leaving the bottoms of each bowl uh, completely blank so they can set on any surface. And, and once I've done this, I'm gonna set them, uh, leave them out to cool down for just a little while. The paper mache does get warm and another reason to work on multiple vessels at once. If one gets too warm and starts getting drippy and you really would like the finish smooth, then just um, give it a light fuse, move on to the next one until it solidifies and then come back and just fuse it in small areas at a time if you're trying to really get out those brush strokes and get it really smooth. And of course you can leave the drips and color those too. It leaves a great effect with the drips. So if you'd like to see one way of painting these bowls, then I will be doing it in next week's Wax on Wednesdays video in part two. Have a great week guys. Happy Wax on Wednesdays.